action. I'm here with Alex Olivier, product lead and founding team of Cerbos. I sang that song because you all are a totally remote company. You focus on that scalable world of authorization. So exactly. I'm really excited to see a demo. So you're going to show us something. Yeah, great. Yeah, firstly, thank, thanks for having me. Um, Cerbos, we're really focusing on solving this authorization problem. You now, you look back at software development over the years, there's always been this sort of decoupling of components over time. You know, nowadays, you would never build your own database if you're building software, unless you're a database business. Uh, go back the last five, 10 years, we've seen an explosion of decoupling of the authentication side of things. So you've got Okta, Auth0 these days that sold authentication. You, know, you wouldn't go and build a username, password database in this day and age. For Cerberus, we're solving for the authorization piece. Once you know who someone is, they're authenticated, well, what can they actually do inside of your system? Uh, typically, in a sort of B2B SaaS type platform, you'll have different user roles. You have an admin, you have an editor, you have a viewer, you might have someone that's a manager with some special permissions. And that very quickly kind of gets quite complicated business logic. Yeah. Uh, if you go and actually look at what a typical system sort of might look like, you'll, be see, you'll see things like this littered amongst the code base. Yeah. Where you're like checking who the user is, are they part of your company, and if so, they should be able to do some things. You might want to look at what package or the product they have. You know, maybe they're in a particular group. You might want to do they're some logic. Based programming reason. languages. Exactly, exactly. And where service comes in is we're trying to help you decouple all that quite complicated and very fragile in times mm. business logic, which if you get wrong, it's quite bad. You know, you're going to give people access to things they shouldn't. Right. So the way service approaches it is turns all of that sort of complicated logic into a single line of uh, API callouts to a serverless instance. Wait, what's that thing you just... Little slider. This is the old Whoa. before and after. Of That's a sweet slider. Complicated, scary things. You, know, you have the same sort of thing in different languages. Imagine you're like a microservices architecture. You'll have done things in Java, you have things in Python, so in Go. And every part of this code base and every single API call, for example, you're going to want to check permissions. How's the usability on that slider? <laughs> People like that. It is the best performing thing on our homepage. Oh, I imagine the so. The before and after the magic. Now, I would be very skeptical if I saw this. Like, how does this <laughs> actually work? I can't quite believe that. You're yeah. going to reduce all this complexity well, that's down. That's good, you know, because that helps you make it better. Indeed, indeed. So we don't like doing big, long pictures. We just have really one diagram that sure. demonstrates how things work. So typical system, you have your users authenticated on your website. They're making a request to your service. That might be a big monolith, might be a web of microservices. In that request, you know who the user is because they're authenticated. You know, you, they've logged in, you've got a JWT token, you've got uh, some sort of session. Uh, and you also know from your own user database you know, what team they belong to, what organization they're in, what package they have, these kind of other attributes. And then you also know what resource they're trying to access. So for example, in like an expenses tracking system, they'll be trying to submit an expense. It has an amount, it has a company it's associated with, it has a date, it has who submitted it. And then as we kind of saw in that before and after slider, you would normally have this big, complicated, if-else case switch style logic right. to work out whether the action should be allowed or not. And that would be listed across your code base. The Cerberus model flips out on its head. And you, all that business logic is now extracted out into a Cerberus uh, policy decision point, which you run inside of your infrastructure. So it's actually inside your VPC. You know, if you're on Kubernetes, you run it as a sidecar. It's completely stateless. And now wherever you're doing that business logic check, it's now a single call out to that Cerberus instance. And it simply says, I have this principle, so it's a user or maybe an API token, trying to do this particular action on a particular resource. So it is Alex, his organization is the new stack, uh, he's in the admin team, he's trying to post a blog, and the blog is going to this uh, particular category. And that service instance then makes a decision whether that action should be allowed or not. And it makes that decision based on policy. So okay. you define all your business logic of uh, here's my resources, here are the actions that should be allowed on it, and here are the conditions that must be met for that action to be allowed. So that service instance uses those policies and that input or principal resource action to simply return back in either an allow or deny. So now back in your application code, before we had that big complicated logic, it's now a single if statement. If it's allowed, do the thing. If not, return some sort of error. So the policy issue mm. is a big one, isn't it, then? So the companies really need to be thinking about their policies a lot more often than they do. Absolutely. So my previous roles, I've been both developer and product manager at small startups through to massive enterprises. And defining this authorization logic usually boils down to like a big old spreadsheet of different types of people, different types of resources and actions and who should be allowed. You know, they should be able to do this. They shouldn't be able to do this. This person should be allowed only under these conditions. 
So that, that process, and really it's the product owner or product manager that owns this logic, kind of has that down and on some sort of definition. And then it's a matter of just turning that into service policy uh, definition files, which are very human readable, they're YAML, um, and they define all these conditions. Whilst in kind of the old or typical way of doing it, every time those requirements change, you're going to have to go back to your dev team, and that may be a dev team of different services and different languages that are going to have to take that updated permission logic and go and update it across the entire code base and release these things. So this beauty of like decoupling the authorization logic out to policy, which you can store centrally in like okay. a Git repo, that can now evolve independently of your code base. Okay. So as things change, you change it in one place, and then all your application, regardless of where the checks are being made from, uh, get an updated response to it. So just taking us through this, so you have your application, you have the users. Yep. Um, the other the other kind of uh, players here on the application side are what exactly then? The uh, So the big one is like the user's identity. Right. So you have an identity data provider. Sources. And right. then you have your own like application data. So if right. it's an expense system, you have expenses, you might have an invoice. If there's a you know a a news white site, you might have like article resources. And these are just business and context specific parts of your application. And so then that that data from all of those sources goes through the Cerbos engine. Yes. And then the Cerbos engine is essentially auditing those logs. Yeah, so Service Engine is based on whatever the policies have been defined, is making a decision at, at request time, in context, should this action be allowed or not. Okay. And as well as making a decision on that policy, it's also giving you a nice audit log. At this time, this principal did this action on this resource, and it was either allowed or denied, which is super important in like regulated industries or like SOC 2 compliance and, and these sort of things. And then is that data then, then used for the policy repository? So the policy repository is where the policies are kept. So Git right. repo, database, okay. storage, whatever. So it like flows that. in through back and forth, through the application layer, through the engine. Yeah. And does the policy repository ever get updated? So you only need to update your policy repository when your business logic changes. Okay. The service itself is fully stateless. Okay. You don't have to worry about replicating your data to like a policy or authorization engine. You provide all that context at request time. Because from an architectural perspective, this thing needs to be very snappy because Authentication, you can cache for 30 minutes. Authorization, you have to go on every check. Just in conclusion, what is the value on this on top of what people already have? What is the old that you're making new? Yeah, so the old world is that big, complicated, if-else style logic yeah. to work out what's going on. The service model is it's decoupled. You can evolve your authorization logic independently of your code base when requirements change, or you land a big client with some new custom requirement. Plus, it gives you that audit piece. If you're in a regulated industry, if you're going to SOC 2, ISO compliance, you're going to have to prove your access controls and access logs. And Service gives you that in a very clean, simple interface um, that you can then feed into your other systems. Great. Alex, thank you so much thank for taking the time. Much. Appreciate it. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.